Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to measure airflow with an in-duct hot wire anemometer. So we're inserting this tip into the duct, into those holes right there that we've pre-drilled, but I'll explain why we drilled them in the location where we drilled them at. But we're going to measure our airflow, which is measured in CFMs, and that's cubic feet per minute. And we're going to confirm that our measurement, our average CFM, is correct by using the temporized formula. Here's an up-close shot of our tool, and we're going to go ahead and turn this on. Now there's a little bit of a warm-up period, and over here on the probe tip, you see you have your two sensors there. They're on your probe, and we're going to be taking this probe and putting it into the duct. On the tool right now, you see it says feet per minute, and then here it says temperature. Now you can go down, and you see CFMs and Fahrenheit. You see CFM, feet per minute. So we're just going to leave it right here for now. We're going to be putting this into a rectangular duct, so we're going to press the duct button, and you see it says uh, diameter, height, and width. So we're going to press enter for that, and we have a rectangular duct indicated by that right there. If we were to press down, you see it's a circle for a round duct, so we're going to leave it at rectangular duct, and we're going to press enter, and our dimensions for our duct is 10 and a quarter inches, so we're just going to leave it at about 10.2. So you can just press up or down, and then you press enter, and our, our depth for the duct is 18 inches. So we already have it set there. So 18 inches, we're gonna press enter. And now we're gonna press our average button. So this is gonna be a timed average. So you see that we have our, our clock right there. We're gonna press enter. And now we're ready to insert this probe into the duct and when we do get this all the way in the duct, we can go ahead and press enter and we're going to start our timing. The reason that we're timing is because we're going to be putting this probe in at different depths inside the duct and in five different holes. So we want to get an average CFM for the whole duct. Remember that it's very important to check the airflow of a system in preparation to check the refrigerant charge. And if you're not familiar with checking the refrigerant charge and troubleshooting, check out our book, which is available over at our website and also Amazon. Now we're going to go ahead and get back to checking the airflow. We already have our holes drilled here, but in order to determine where your holes need to be drilled, you got to make sure that it's in a, a long straight section of duct and that's very close to the air handler. You want to make sure to, to know what you're, how far in you're going to be drilling your holes. In order to determine that, it's very easy. It's, it's if this duct from here to here is less than 30 inches, then you're going to be drilling five holes. If it was between 30 and 60 inches, then you'd need six holes. But for a five hole, uh, right here, a five hole for the traversing, your point from here to here is going to be 7.4% of the duct width. So from here to here is going to be 28.8%. From here to here is 50%. From here to here is 71.2%. And from here to here is 926 So it's very easy. If this is a 10 and a quarter inch duct, you take your calculator and it's 10.25 times 0 0.074, and that's going to give you right around three quarters of an inch. If you did 10.25 times 0 0.288, you're going to have right around three inches. It's a little bit less than three inches. And 50% is obviously right in the middle, and your other side is going to be just the same. It's going to be a mirror image of this side. So you technically don't have to do your 71.2% and your 92.6. So, so this is going to be three quarters of an inch off. This is going to be roughly about three inches. This is going to be in the center. So you know where all your holes are drilled at. Now you're going to be drilling the holes to a diameter of whatever duct plug you have, and you want to make sure that your, your probe is going to fit into the hole. So in this case, we're using three eighths inch duct plugs. In order to drill the holes, I usually use a unibit, and you can see that we have a unibit on our drill, and we are drilling into the duct. If you're not comfortable and you feel like you're going to go in too far, you can put a, a washer on the unibit to stop you from going in too far, but this is how I do it. We have our system running now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from feet per minute to CFM, and as well, there is a flat part here on our probe. We're going to need to have that up, because to have this up, we're going to allow our airflow in through these two sensors. If we don't, our airflow is going to be coming at the side, and it's not going to be accurate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this probe all the way to the end of the duct where this, this probe touches the end of the duct. And then I'm going to press enter to start our timer. And once I get it out to the end, right about here, I'm going to press enter again. 
and then I'm going to insert it all the way into our other hole. So here we go. Now what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna to try to maintain about 11 seconds. I wanna have it at about the same time for each hole. So we're doing pretty good so far with keeping our time at about the same amount per hole. There we go. So 55 seconds. We did 11 seconds per hole. That's right on. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press our average and that's going to show us our CFM. So our CFM is 837 and now what I want to do is I want to prove that this is very close to the CFM of what it should be by using the temporize formula. So you know this system is a two-ton system and 837 CFMs is what's needed for a two-ton system. You need about 400 CFMs per ton and so you have 400 CFMs equals 12,000 BTUs of heat removal capacity and that equals about one ton. So if this is a two ton, which is 24,000 BTUs, then we need right around 800 CFMs, and that's right about what this tool is reading our airflow at. At this point now, I can also put in my duct plugs in order to close off the holes. So you just press them in just like that, and they won't pop off. Now that we measured our CFM with our induct anemometer, we're going to use the temporize formula to verify this measurement. In order to do that, we're going to have to temporarily shut the system off and take this cover off. We're going to have to take an amperage reading on the electric strip heater, and we're also going to have to take a temporize between our return duct and our supply duct. Once our meter's in place, then we're going to go ahead and turn the system on in order to do our calculations for the temporize formula in order to determine our CFM. So now we have our cardboard in place, we have our magnets holding our cardboard there, and we have our AC amp clamp clamped around this wire right here, and we have our, our alligator clips on these two electrical connections, and I'm just going to go ahead and plug these in when we're ready, and there's rubber on the end, so we're not going to be uh, touching any metal. And then we also have our temp meter right here, and we have those two bead type temp sensors in the ducts, in through our quarter inch zip screw holes we made with our drill earlier and then when we're done we're just going to be putting a zip screw back over those holes again but we're going to go ahead and turn this on we're going to hit the decimal point and then we're going to go look for a differential so our differential should be very close to zero and this meter was calibrated not too long ago so it should be very very close to zero temperature differential between the two probes but it could be slightly different just due to the temperatures in those two ducts and we'll go ahead and turn our AC amp clamp on and we'll go ahead and turn it on. So first thing the electric resistance is getting powered and then the blower motor is, is going to turn on and let's check our amperage looks to be right about 21.6 amps and our temperature differential what we're looking for is that we're looking for it to settle in into a constant temperature differential uh, but the thing is what we want to keep in mind is if that temperature differential keeps rising then that means that our, our blower motor speed is not high enough or we have a airflow restriction or something like that so but right now we're reading right about 19.3 uh, degrees as a temperature differential and 21.65 so so that's what we got right there 
and let's go ahead and check our voltage. And our voltage is 241.3. So we have our, our three measurements. This is right about 19.2 degrees. So we have our three measurements and let's go ahead and input them into our formula. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off now. You can turn it off at the thermostat or since we're right here, I'm just gonna turn it off at the breaker. So our volts times amps times 3.414 equals 17,835. Then we have 1.08 times the delta T and that equals 20.74. So we have 17,835 divided by 20.74 and we're left at 860 CFMs. So what you wanna remember is that for every ton of capacity, you want about 400 CFMs of airflow for, for a cooling system, for an air conditioning system. So that could be say 350 to 425 CFMs and you could have a, a, on the lower side that 350 if you're trying to remove a lot of humidity out of the building, but we're right about on the higher side right there, we're at 430 CFMs per ton. So 860 CFMs divided by two for a two ton capacity equals 430 CFMs. The CFM that we got with the temporized formula was very close to what we read with the induct anemometer. It was just slightly higher, but once again, very close. So this system has the correct amount of airflow it needs for us to check the refrigerant charge and also for troubleshooting. So if you want to learn more about troubleshooting while reading the refrigerant gauges and checking superheat, subcooling, vapor sat temp, we have our book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. This book and also our quick reference cards are available over at our website at acservicetech.com and also at amazon.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.